Welcome to World of Braiding and Extensions. My name is Joy Fido and today we're going to be doing another exciting thing for you to see. Today we're going to be creating a center parting natural hair weave where the client's hair is left out on the hairline and then we're going to put in amazing virgin hair which just shows you that this hair works on all races. So this is something really exciting and I'm looking for, forward to it. And remember the client's hair is equally virgin hair, natural hair, so there's no chemicals in this hair. So we're going to just do something really amazing. So step by step and you're going to watch everything. So we thank you so much for buying this DVD and welcome on board. Okay, so what's really important in this DVD is for you to understand that we've always said to you that we love working with natural healthy hair so it's all about professional healthy natural hair that's what we represent so every time we're creating something for you we are focusing on how healthy this is for our client and our client's hair so to start with our products that we're going to be using today is the hair extensions and this particular one is the chrome hair which is virgin hair natural hair Temple hair, Remy hair, you name all of that. It's all one thing we're talking about. And it's hair from people. And I don't know if you can guess what I'm doing. I'm just trying to feel this hair. It is so natural, it's unbelievable. It's, it's just like hair from your head. So the next thing we need with this particular DVD is how to work with our client's virgin natural Afro hair. And then give it that texture that's going to blend it with that virgin hair I just showed you. Because remember, we're dealing with two different textures. And we said we're going to leave the client's hair out in the open. So the virgin afro hair and the straight natural virgin hair extensions are going to be two textures. So we're going to have to connect them, blend them so they look the same and work together. Now remember, we stand for healthy hair all the time, so we would need something that can change the texture of our virgin hair into straight look without having to apply any chemicals at all. So we're going to have to use a heat equipment. While we may not really encourage heat all the time, occasionally you can use it once in a while. So in this particular case, we're working with something that is absolutely amazing. We've worked with it before and we love it a bit. So we're introducing it to you today and it's called the Edge Stick. So this is the Edge Stick. This is the box that it comes in. And here is the Edge Stick itself in my hand. 
Now the features on this egg stick is the teeth is so small that it can pick every strand of hair and then the heat in it is connected inside the teeth. So they work together, just like what we used to call the thermal styling. That's the same job it does. Only difference is this is a lot healthier than the thermal styling because that did not control its heat. This heat is evenly distributed. But before you apply any heat on your hair, the first thing you want to work with is a heat protector. And in this particular case, we're going to be working with the one from Motions. Now, every business, every company that pro provides us with products, most of them, Cara Care, so many names I can't think of right now, they all have their heat protector. So make sure before you apply the heated equipment on your client's natural hair, you protect the strands before you so to get this dvd going and our work today done i'm introducing you to our young gorgeous zina you've seen her several times and her long huge afro hair so this is how we're going to get into the weave remember we said we're taking some of it out so we can give her a center part in and work with her natural hairline and we're going to create all the slickness from this natural hair with the edge stick that we showed you earlier. Okay, so to get us started, we have to create a way the hair that we don't want to put into the weave. So I'm taking off all her hairline. All of this is coming out. And I'm taking off this whole patch of hair. So this is where she's going to be able to create her center parting. And the same thing I have here is what I've got here. So this is all the hair that's coming out, which is not going to be inside the weave. And all this hair here is what's going to be inside the weave. So I'm going to start now by creating my cornrow section. But remember, I will show you how I start the pattern of the cornrow that I'm going to create. But this is not a cornrow DVD. So if you haven't got your cornrow, don't look at this DVD and think you're go going to be able to create this weave. So to get us started, now remember we're working with virgin afro hair. Now you would think that that's it, you just carry on with hair because it's so thick you can't add anything else. No. When you're starting, you need a hint of extension. Now what this helps to give you is... A bit of firmness of where you're going to actually stitch and that's from your very first point that you create the cornrows after that this hair is going to be so thick that we'll be struggling to know where to put them so it's just for the beginning you need a bit of cornrows and our um, extension and i want to so our full head of afro we've turned it into a flat base of cornrow now this is what i always say don't say that there's a pattern i showed you and so you stick to that pattern all the time what you have to do is look at your client's hair and decide what's best for you in this case we had a big head of afro hair that was really long and full and we needed to create it such that we have a flat base so look at how this is what i then did was Start the afro cor um, the coral from here and I went down that way, dropped it, and I did another one that way and dropped it here. So I kept doing that until I got in that bit in. Then I had the ones at the back. And then I went this way, starting from the base, went up and connected it and went that way and stopped it and carried on like that. So now I've got a really flat base. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to just flatten all this tidy in a way that's what we call it again in the in the creation of the foundation so you tidy away the excess hair so that's what i'm going to do now so each of these strands sticking out i'm going to flatten them down and bring them all in like that and i'm going to stitch them with the needle so once i finish stitching that i'll show you just stitching and maybe show you a bit of what I'm stitching. So once that's done, then we're going to get ready for adding the extensions onto the base. So the stitching is your needle. Remember the C needle. That's my favorite. I don't like working with the straight needle. So the C needle. And then you put the thread in and pull it through. Don't knot it at all. I never work with knotted. See, that's a single thread. So once you put that in, it helps to create again a flatter base. 
so I'm going to start by just picking one of the excess hair and I'm stitching it in so needle goes in I pull it completely through and then I knot it Okay, so carrying on, look at what we've done. Remember the extra hairs, excess hair that was all over the place? I've stitched them in. So they're all nicely flattened. Now what I'm going to do next, because she has natural hair, if where you are, they don't have what I'm going to show you now, you don't have to worry about it. What you then do is start your stitching and just carry on. You have enough cornrow base to actually stitch on. But for my own purpose, I'm going to introduce the weaving cap now what the weaving cap will do is it will protect her hair as well as give me enough base to stitch on so wherever i want to put because what i'm trying to do is put a lot of hair in this weave so i want to have enough lines to actually stitch as much hair as i want to work with so that's the reason i'm working with the weaving cap Okay, so what I've just done is I'm beginning to stitch. I just started from there and I'm just following the cornrow that I've created to hold the part of the weave cap that I want to hold it. So that way when I'm actually putting my weave on, I don't have to worry if it's going to shift out of place for me. Okay, so to get you started, you get your needle and your thread in. Remember the same way we started earlier, it's just the one you work with at a time. Don't double it, don't knot anything, just single. And then you put it in, you notice I've left a little gap here. So I'm going to go back on myself. And if you've ever done stitching, if you've ever sewn, that's what they call double stitching. So you take or back stitching. I'll take it backwards and I'll stitch it in. So I went just tiny inch, like an inch. Went into the middle and put it in. And then I'm going to cut. I'll cut the little string off and carry on. Okay, so I carry on my stitches. Now, what you probably want to know is what's happening to the weave cap or weave net that I put on and what's happening to the coral. Once you have your weave net on, that automatically becomes your base. So the net is on the coral and you're picking all of them together. Net, coral and weft all come together. Remember when you're stitching, you're not inserting into the weft. You're just going underneath the weft. Because especially for virgin hair, you want to reuse it. And the minute you start poking the needle into the weft, you lose it. So it doesn't really serve you any purpose to put your needle in the weft. So this is how far we've gone with our wefts. Um, what I've got left is about two, weft, two lines. And so these are the sides. And look at how much hair we've got in this. We've actually added another packet of hair. And what we worked with, what we started with was 22. And we topped it up with 18. So you see the layered effect we're getting. Hold on. So you see how flat they feel. Just Once you finish, you cannot trim off the net. And left hanging. Remember, if you trim this off before you did the stitching, it would have pulled itself out on you. Next thing I'm going to spray is the heat protecting. We call it the heat. They call it the heat seeker from motions. Again, just to protect the hair from heat damage. 
And so you spray that on. Okay, so you get your edge stick ready. And then you section the hair that you want to straighten. But make sure you put your products in. Because remember, this is heat that you're applying to the hair. So you protect the hair. And then slowly, very slowly glide it through. Very, very slowly. Because what we're dealing with is virgin afro hair that's never been chemically processed. So we're trying to straighten this hair to blend in with the extension that we put in. So carrying on from our work, we're trying to style this hair now to give it a lot of bounce and curls and beauty. Now the things you may need will be your curling iron. So this is a regular curling iron. And then the one we're working with is the curling wand. So you have choices to work with whatever makes you happy. So here we put some products in the hair. Okay, so I rolled it over the wand and you give it a few seconds. And then drop. And that's what we've done so far. So I'll take you through the very first stages. Now the look we're trying to create is a hair extensions look. This hair is hair extension. It's not her natural hair. So that's why we're applying heat on it. The hair is not coming from the scalp anymore. In the real sense of it, this hair is dead. I know hair generally is dead, but there's no amount of heat damage that's going to affect this client's hair. This hair is an extension. That's why we apply heat on it. Okay, so we're trying to blend the client's hair and the hair extensions together. One of the best products or equipment I like working with is the GHD. Apart from when we use the edge stick, which also helped us to straighten this hair. The GHD completely blends it in. That's the client's natural hair. No chemicals involved. <laughs> 